I will have to say this. When you take America Top Team out of the equation, you have no founder, you don't have power struggles, it's easy to have a little bit of a better show. And this company, whatever the hell you want to call them this week, I thought had an okay to somewhat decent episode of Impact Wrestling. But so much of what really matters and what is really important comes down to branding. Your brand in business is everything. If you have the ability to have a worldwide recognized name brand, good or bad, whatever connotations come with that, you are so far ahead of the game of so many other people and so many other businesses, so many other competitors. Like you look at for so many years, McDonald's, they really were the kings of fast food branding. The Golden Arches, Ronald McDonald, the Happy Meal, and all of that. But in recent years, as the company went away from the things that made it the most successful, because they were foolishly trying to appeal to millennials, they were trying to do this, they were trying to do that. Ultimately, they didn't know what the hell they were doing. And they lost a lot of what made their brand so powerful and so impactful in the marketplace of fast food over the years. People don't really think about the Golden Arch anymore in the same way. They don't think about the number of billions of burgers served. Remember how many years that was a big deal for the company. They don't use Ronald McDonald at all. One of the biggest things that McDonald's used to have going for it was wisely they would market towards kids with the Happy Meals. The kids want the toy that comes in the Happy Meal, so the parents are going to oblige just to shut the little buggers and brats up. Ultimately, the parents, as a byproduct, even if they don't want to eat there, even if they don't like the food, even if they can't stand the food, are going to eat there because of the kids. So instead of being a kid-driven business model, McDonald's wanted to appeal to adults, and they were retarded for doing so flat out flat out and they've made so many other bad decisions over the years in terms of their branding in terms of marketing in terms of effectively promoting their product and who they are and what they're about to their audience or to their customer base that their customer base has dwindled and sales are soft compared to what they have been in the past and the overall impact of the brand in the marketplace is not what it once was the reason I bring that up is when you look at this company right now, this wrestling company, I keep saying this company, this wrestling company, because I don't know what the hell to call them. I'm assuming we are done once and for all with the TNA name, but are they Global Force Wrestling? Are they Impact Wrestling as a company and also as a TV show? I have no clue what the hell is going on here. And even when you see some of the releases that come out from Anthem about the product and the company, it's really hard to tell. Are we still calling them GFW? Uh, even though Jeff Jarrett supposedly still technically owes the name, are we calling them Impact Wrestling as a company? And then also the TV show is Impact Wrestling? Uh, is it kind of strange that we have a bunch of belts that are called Global Force Wrestling titles if we're going to call the brand Impact Wrestling? The point is, I'm trying to get at, is ultimately this company needs to figure out what the hell they're about. And, and not anybody else's identity, their own identity. They need to create one. They need to cultivate that image. They need to cultivate, create, develop, expand that brand. And as for so many years, this company has obviously always done a terrible job of this for a variety of reasons. It only gets worse now under new ownership. The faces at the top may be different to a certain degree, but the bullshit is still the same. And as you're watching this show, even outside of just the name of the company, it's really hard to determine what the number one goal of the program for this company is. Are you trying to push your own roster and your own talent and your own programming? Or are you just basically the AAA affiliate of AAA and you're just a farm club for them and you're pimping them out? And that's what you want to be about. You want to be about other companies. You're not really a brand in and of yourself. You're like a retarded ass 21st century version of the NWA, a brand that hasn't mattered in over 30 freaking years. I don't get it. Like we're talking about Johnny Impact and he had multiple number one contenders matches on the show. Kind of weird that you would have the guy wrestling twice, but hey, whatever. 
He's somebody that's got a little bit of name recognition from his WWE days and some of the other things he's done throughout wrestling. So I can understand wanting to feature him in multiple segments on the show. That is okay. And when I look at how they utilized him here, I thought it was okay. But it seems like we're more interested in emphasizing all the titles he holds as AAA. Not as a compliment. Not as a subset to what he's doing with this company now, but as that's the reason to be excited about him. That's the reason he's such a big deal is because of all the titles he holds for another freaking company. Mind you, another freaking company where that relationship in large part comes because of the Memphis Midcard piece of crap founder who, oh, by the way, has taken an indefinite leave from the company, whatever the hell it's called, and we don't even know if he's going to be back. So the match with KM is one thing. Even though I thought he was undefeated and we're just going to have, have him end his undefeated run right here for the fuck all of it. But later on, what was it? Texano Jr. and Johnny Impact, you know, following up on the tag match of EC3 and Eddie Edwards versus uh, Phantasma and Pagano, the guys from AAA. Again, why so much AAA on this fucking show? If people want to watch a AAA product, they can go to Netflix and fucking watch Lucha Underground. Or they can find a way to watch AAA somewhere else they're supposed to be coming to this company to watch this company's product not another company's talents another company's roster another company's programming it is completely and totally ridiculous and it is a stupid ass business model and you can see by recent viewership numbers it's not working and it's destined to fail which is like the tagline for this company tna impact gfw Whatever the fuck you call us, destined to fail, but we always stubbornly cling to life. I mean, like you got Taya Valkyrie, her match against Ava Story. You know, how stupid it is that Ava Story's like smiling the whole time that Taya's beating the shit out of her. That just kind of ruined the whole thing for it. But, you know, now you got Taya talking about she's a luchador in this, which again is tying into Mexico, which is again tying into AAA. And it's again, not shit directly involved with here. At least I will say, in this case, it actually tied more so into the women that are actually on the Knockouts roster for this company. Especially the part when Rosemary comes out, it's like, oh my god, that makes logical sense. Valkyrie took her out, now she's coming back to respond, people are behind her, there's some baby face pops there. But then, instead of just keeping it on these two and letting these two play into something next Sunday, or next Thursday, excuse me, for Victory Road... Now here comes this bitch and that bitch and that bitch and that bitch. And now all of a sudden we got six women in the ring and it's all types of confusing. And instead of kind of resolving this one story here or advancing this one story here, you just kind of throw a schmoz of women out there for the hell all of it into one segment instead of probably would have been wiser splitting them off into two different segments. I don't get it. Like OVE, LAX, and the club. Okay, all, all the stuff about this whatever. Um, you know, never mind the fact that these guys just had a title match for the GFW tag titles in the crash promotion in Tijuana, Mexico to where on Impact last week we only saw the highlights of it and it wasn't even oh, a team versus team it was a fucking four-way tag match so now next week we're going to have a rematch apparently is this going to actually be in the Impact Zone is this going to be shown from another freaking promotion I don't know and at this point I don't really care of the Global Forge thing, at least something that doesn't directly tie into AAA or another wrestling company, just really weird and really strange, and honestly, I don't know what this bootleg-ass version of Tough Enough or Wrestling Talent Search is supposed to be. What the fuck is Global Forge? I hadn't even heard about it before. I'm just saying. One positive of the show, you got Grado in a very, very small dose. Let's decrease the size of the dose until ultimately we don't need a dose at all. But it's okay. For one week, we got very little of them, and that's exactly where he needed to be. Uh, Congo Kong versus Mahabali Shara. They could have wrestled in AAA for all the hell I care. This was bad. This is brutal. This was choppy. This is spotty. Uh, not very good. Uh, we don't really need to see this again. Just saying. Uh, but, but again, as we go through this show, it's just so many things that this company does that emphasizes shit that isn't actually about the damn company. And no, this is not good. No, this is not compelling. No, this is not different. No, this is not interesting. This is fucking stupid. Like, again, you go back to EC3 and Eddie Edwards. 
Why are we fighting two guys from AAA? We can't find two other people in the roster for these guys to face off with. If you want to do something with these two, we can't find a purpose for this or we can't do a thing for that. We can't find a different opponent for EC3 and his grand championship. I mean, you got so many other things you could do. And then what was really ridiculous out of all of this is that who comes out to say make the save but none other than the Cowboy James Storm. Why in the hell would he be doing anything to help EC3 in any way, shape, or form at this point? Understood he shook Eddie Edwards' hands and that's all fine and good. Why the fuck would he do anything to help out EC3? I don't care. I had to make sure I worked that in. Uh, but back to the branding thing. All these people from AAA and the, previously the people from Pro Wrestling Noah all of these people that are not a part of your roster, that are not going to be there on a consistent basis, why in the fuck are you giving them television time? Why in the hell are you putting them over in any way, shape, or form? Why in the hell do you feel like at this point in time that this is going to really bring any new eyeballs or fresh eyeballs to your product? Because clearly based off of the viewership numbers, ding dong, dumb dicks, it's not working. That's not working. Stop it. Just stop it. You're getting to the point where you feel like this is almost going to be a two-hour highlight show where instead of actually doing any television tapings, you literally feel like this company is going to send its talents to different independent shows and you're going to allow those independent shows to book the creative for that particular. So you're going to be showing matches from all over the country and all over the world, but meanwhile, your brand, your product doesn't even have a fucking show that it actually tapes itself. And this feels like that's what we're progressing to. And if you're progressing to that point, then why do you even bother having a brand? Why do you even bother having a show? Why do you even have bother having a fucking company? The main event of this show, mind you, was showing highlights of Eli Drake defending the GFW title in AAA in Mexico against some dude named Bronce. Like, if you sat there and told me that you were going to show footage of Eli Drake defending the GFW title in Japan against a member of the Bullet Club, I would say, you know what? That is okay because there are enough internet and hardcore wrestling fans that will know who the hell uh, some of those Bullet Club members are or somebody from New Japan is. They're going to know. So that could make sense. But doing this shit here where the vast majority of your American wrestling audience has no clue who most of these fucking guys are in AAA and that's what you're choosing to feature is a freaking highlight package basically of a world title match. How stupid does that make your world title look? How stupid does that make your goddamn company look that you're showing highlight features of your belt being defended on another freaking show? Unbelievable. Again. Trying to pad in yourself after the NWA is dumb. The NWA doesn't matter and hasn't mattered for honestly three freaking decades now. Why would you try to go back to the well of doing something a certain way that was 50, 60 years ago that is for all intents and purposes dead RIP buried? What, because you want to fuck with Billy Corgan? Focus on your own roster. Focus on your own talent. Focus on your own stories. Focus on your own fucking shows. Because at this point in time, not only do I not know what the hell to call this company, I don't know who I'm supposed to care about. I don't know half of the people on this damn show because they wrestle in promotions and brands that I don't give a crap about and I don't watch. And all the while trying desperately to figure out why these MMA people are getting so much run, you're not a fucking MMA company. Why so many of these people in AAA are getting so much run on your television, working relationship, my ass. AAA is pimping you for whatever audience you have. They're getting all the benefit and you're getting fucking none. As much as you thought Dixie Carter was the be-all, end-all in terms of evil and bad and stupid for professional wrestling and for this company... Let me tell you something. Even with this show, that wasn't all that bad because of some of the things more so that it didn't have as opposed to the things that it did, this company still has major significant issues that they apparently are too retarded to realize are wrong and to go about trying to fix any of them. That's why this is OTRS Central and it's not the wrestling show you want 
just the wrestling show you need. And I watch this shit sometimes so you don't have to. Later.